We're checking out those new super fast SSDs right here. Hi. Hi, good morning. Uh, so uh, please introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Fabrizio Keller. Uh, I'm the senior marketing, product marketing manager from uh, Western Digital. Hi, everyone. And this uh, right here that I'm testing out on, uh, I'm trying to, to see if this is the smartest move for anyone who buys a MacBook M1, um, uh, the M1 MacBook Pro or Air or Mini, is that they can just buy the smallest internal SSD and then use a huge external SSD. And today you're announcing very high capacity, right? Correct, correct. So we just recently introduced, uh, basically this week at CES, the virtual CES, so the latest um, capacity addition. So essentially, we are launching the four terabytes uh, capacity size on all the SanDisk uh, portable SSD and the WD portable SSDs. You actually have them right there, right? Yeah, precisely. So I can either show it to you here. This is the Extreme Pro, SanDisk Extreme Pro portable SSD. Hope you can see it properly. Yeah. So this one is the top of the line on the SanDisk side. So because it's featuring uh, NVMe uh, technology inside with a USB 3.2 generation 2x2. Two two. So uh, this, this goes to 4 terabytes now? It goes up to 4 terabytes. It's available in 1, 2, 4 terabytes. You have another top. camera also you can show? Uh... Absolutely. Yeah. So you can see basically all the lineup is here. This, this is the, these are the SanDisk ones. The little brother is the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD and the SanDisk Extreme Pro Portal with SSD. So with this one, you go up to 1,050 megabytes uh, per second in read and 1,000 megabytes per second in write. With this one, you have almost double speed with 2,000 megabytes uh, per second in both write and read. And my Passport SSD has also the same performance of the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD with 1,050 megabytes per second. This were, was the predecessor uh, of the My Passport SSD. So this is going out, essentially. I just put one USB flash drive just to uh, make you understand better the, the size of the product as well. So they are really compact, uh, durable design. As you can see, the SanDisk ones uh, are pretty rugged uh, design. They are IP55 certified, so for waterproof and dust re resistance. The additional and you also have a you also have Thunderbolt three drive, right? Uh, with the what's it called, the G. That's the G it? drive, exactly. That's the G drive. Let me see if I can show you quickly. That's the G drive Mobile Pro SSD. It's out in the market since a while. This is a Thunderbolt three device. As you can see, you can reach up to twenty eight hundred megabytes per second with a forty gigabit per second uh, interface. Essentially, does this one also go up to four terabytes? So. This goes up to two terabyte. Actually. Two terabyte, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's a lot of very fast storage. It's, uh, uh, but uh, it requires your laptop. There's a few laptops now that have a, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2. Yeah, that's true. That's quite limited out in the market right now. But we see also from many manufacturers there are there's a trend of um, adoption rate and uh, there are more and more product launching on this interface. We know that's a pretty high-end uh, type of product, uh, which is required especially for creative professional enthusiasts. But it's, uh, it's something that we, we, we can trust the, the market is, is going there as well. So the mainstream NVMe SSD is mainly now, nowadays covered by the SanDisk Extreme uh, type of product as well as the My Passport SSD. Nice. And uh, actually, I have right now, uh, uh, right here on my M1 uh, MacBook Air uh, doing a speed test on here. So that means that the M1 MacBook Air is just able to do, uh, if you can see, uh, 800. Uh, so kind of like 1,000. But that's yep. because uh, this one, they, they haven't enabled the uh, Gen 2X2, right? Most uh, likely it's not. It's not backward compatible in this case. So you you are reaching up to 10 gigabit per second uh, performance. So you're not benefiting the, the full 20 gigabit per second in this case. But uh, uh, my use case is uh, actually to edit videos. And I'm trying to figure out in these days, I'm trying to do the tests in Final Cut Pro, uh, Adobe Premiere, and uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is the free app that everybody can use. Um, to try to see if actually to edit 4K 60 videos using the external SSD, maybe it performs just as good or maybe even better than doing everything in internal. 
Do you think there's something to that, even with not having the full 20 gigabit, but just 10 gigabit? No, I think you should be pretty satisfied with the same level of, of performance. If you really uh, want to stress the product and you want an extreme performance, then you, you still have an option uh, on a G technology brand with a G Drive Mobile Pro SSD, which is really targeting uh, the videographer and, and cinema type of audience. It's a little bit more expensive to have a Thunderbolt 3 drive, right? Yeah, absolutely, because obviously there's some cost inside and so on. But maybe for people who use the MacBook M1, uh, they, they are fine with the Extreme Drive. They don't need the Extreme Absolutely. Pro, maybe. Or they can have the previous Extreme Pro, right? The, the one that just got 1,050 megabytes per second. That yeah. should be all covered right it's there. Not, yeah, it's actually not the previous, but is is the one that we just introduced recently at the end of last year. So we, we speed bump all the range from the previous generation, and we introduce NVMe technology across the entire range, essentially. So now we have 1,000 megabyte per second, also on the extreme, and 2,000 on the extreme pro. So definitely you will benefit a, a lot from that performance level. Because uh, the, the thing that I'm thinking is that, for example, a MacBook M1 is able to run the software, you know, like on the, just the, the video editor app on the internal SSD, just the mm -hmm. app, but it might really benefit from doing some of the files from the external and maybe saving the file on internal or maybe saving it back on the external and actually, this is the best way. People can get two terabyte, even four terabyte, much cheaper than what they would pay to Apple if they had to upgrade this internally. Exactly. And then normally you have quite limited space in the internal memory. So that's why you need to attach for sure some external uh, storage to it. So these are available now, uh, four terabyte. How soon can people buy them and what kind of price? Can you show the, the, the other camera again? Yeah. yeah. So the four terabyte we just uh, launched uh, in, um, at CES in terms of availability will be on the late February. So it's coming up shortly in, in the channel. Hopefully the price is, uh, of course, is more than a four terabyte external hard drive. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so four terabyte, the, the price range, it's in the range of $750 $700, street price. So if we are talking about euros, we are in the range of 800 euros uh, for the specific EMEA markets. I think that's pretty much uh, um, kind of like the pricing that maybe Apple will charge for, for just two terabytes internal. So you can have double the storage and then you have the, the, the benefit of having it portable and having, being able to use it on different devices if you have different devices at home and, yeah. and uh, also put in the pockets and not have to bring your whole MacBook to... If you're afraid people might uh, lose your data or something. Exactly. So you, you notice that we have many different uh, brands, different products and different solutions. And the consumer normally would probably have a question, a natural question, which is what, which product should I buy? Which product should I go for? So all our products are tailored for specific audiences. But obviously, any type of consumer can decide whether to take one or the other. So... Essentially, my passport SSD is for the everyday consumer, the everyday backup for productivity mainly. Well, uh, at the same time, on Sunday side, we normally it tends to be the, the brand which is more recognized from photographers and professional photographers. So it's a type of product that's perfect fit for the consumer that on the, that's constantly on the go. Uh, so do you have also some, uh, some more data you can show or some... Um, can you show how, what, what, how does it look inside the drive? Um, like there's a special consideration in terms of uh, heat generation, heat dissipation. Uh, so it doesn't, you, you don't, so you don't need to, to throttle it too much. Yeah, this uh, is what we, we were just mentioning earlier. So it's a kind of nice animation where you can see essentially the, the, the exploded version of the product, how it looks like. So there's, there's read a little red line that you see on the edge of the product. Essentially, it's the uh, aluminum forged uh, chassis. It's not just a design element, but it's also a functional element, an essential element that helps to dissipate the heat away from the drive when, when you're using intensively the drive and operating on it. And it enables the, the user to, to, to benefit from sustained uh, write and, and read speeds in the long term. And at the same time, you can appreciate from this chart the IP555 rating from uh, dust and water, 
the NVMe SSD inside, which is built in-house essentially, and the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 uh, Type-C interface. Can you zoom in a little bit so we can see the this yep. uh, NVMe SSD looks really interesting. Uh, how does it work? Like, um, is it just this little part is where all the storage is? Exactly. So now finally we can benefit of in, in internally developed NVMe SSD. So we are fully integrated and we are really proud of it. So this is all all the area where inside uh, your uh, your data in, in a full secure uh, way also because we introduced also the hardware encryption in, with these new products so you have up to 256 bit aes encryption so it's really really secure uh what's the electronics happening on top there is that, that the, the thing that has the whole uh, usb 3.2 gen 2 x2 correct so i guess it's a pretty good uh uh, chipset that does the whole device part of the 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 th the product here, right? Yeah. So this is what what I was trying to introduce earlier as well in terms of uh, portable SSD portfolio overall from Western Digital with all the brands. So we are trying to satisfy the needs from 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 the customers in each of the single um, type of use case. So and at the same time, we, we are starting from the main pain points of the customer, which are normally limited capacity, uh, the slow transfer speed, the data and the security, and, and also the constant assess and the reliability from, from, the, from the brand that are, we are bringing out in the market. So they can fully trust on us. So we have solutions for gamers, as you can see, everyday users, content creators, and professional. How does that translate into the single specific brands? Essentially, WD is the, the brand that is normally fully trusted for the everyday creator, for the productivity, for the standard type of backup uh, features. Then SanDisk uh, on the other side, it's for mobility and durability, as we mentioned many times, also the uh, IP55 uh, IP rating. WD Black is the brand that we launched in uh, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. So now we are very recognized in this specific uh, uh, segment for gamers. So there's a number of solutions, both internal SSD and external SSD and HDD that are pur purpose built for gamers in order to support them with their uh, constant challenges. And then lastly, but not least, G Technology, which is the professional brand for the videographers for workflow for the top performance out there so and this is what we just uh, mentioned earlier in terms of um, launch of the highest capacity out there with the four terabyte across all the brands so uh, you can really count on capacity performance and reliability at the same time combined nice Four terabyte is a is a nice number. It's it's actually huge. Uh, you can click on hide, not the stop. Yeah. Oh, oh you can stop it also. Yeah. So yeah. so, uh, uh, it's just a question of uh, hopefully that the the quantities can go up and the reliability of the yields and everything. And it'd be nice if these drives become affordable even at four terabytes, right? Uh, the the question is that people should just it should be a no brainer. Just get the cheapest. Uh, MacBook, I'm joking, but uh, why not? But then, and just get a huge external drive. Probably four terabyte is still a, a kind of capacity that is required uh, on SSD side that is required for a specific type of uh, consumer, especially business professional or creative professional. Uh, but normally we see that the, the capacities are trending up and up from month to month. So now we are moving in between from one terabyte and two terabyte are the most uh, sold capacities. And up to 12 months ago, we were still with the 500 gigabytes. So that's also thank for the, the price that is going down a little bit. So the consumer are more and more shifting from HDD to SSD, but HDD hard drive are still required for, for high capacity and cold type of storage rather than hot storage. And uh, uh, here, you, there's this is the video on the... WD Black, Black uh, so this this one goes to four terabytes also. Yeah, this goes to four terabytes as well. It's uh, sharing the same uh, USB technology as the SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD, so it's uh, 
uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, essentially. So you have the 2000 megabyte per second performance. So we developed this drive uh, specifically for gamers in order to allow them not to, you know, be feel limited for, for the space they have in, in their own internal uh, drive or their desktop gaming machine or notebook a game machine. So, and at the same time, bringing the portability elements with them so they can bring the, the games, the game library everywhere with them. And at the same time, they can also save their streaming, live streaming, uh, game live streaming videos on the drive and edit while on the go. Does uh, WD Black uh, perform exactly the same like the Extreme Pro yeah. um, uh, 2000? So they're both yeah. in 2000? Yeah, 2000, and, both write and read. Precisely. And the same, uh, they're not going to, uh, because it looks like, it looks really cool, the WD Black. So people yeah. are welcome to just use WD Black to do the, you know, the more creative stuff. And uh, gamers can also use the other one, but it's... Uh, exactly. Yeah, because gamers, as you said, just said, gamers tend to be also creative professional and edit a lot of videos nowadays. So you can either choose one or the other. Uh, in terms of heat sync dissipation elements, you you don't have the the red thing that obviously that you noticed on the Extreme Pro, but here you have a uh, four holes down in the in the back side in the low side of the product that are used for heat dissipation, and then at the same time you have the metal design that also helps at the same time. To dissipate and man- maintaining sustained uh, speeds. Nice. So this is the pretty much a whole range of um, of uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 uh, drive, except the Thunderbolt 3G uh, over there. Should but drive. then maybe, in, in, I, I guess maybe in the future, uh, everything is going USB 4, right? In the future, maybe. Yeah, that's the the trend in one to two, one to two years. So nowadays uh, we see that. The market is still focused and concentrated on on USB 3, 3.2 Gen 2 as well as the Gen 2 by 2. All right, uh, because uh, when you get to that, then you need to uh, make drives that that can go to 40 gigabit, I guess. 40 it's gigabit, gonna, exactly. It's going to be even faster than 2,800. No, it's going to be, or I'm not sure. Maybe it is 2,800. I think it might it might be even faster, right? Uh, t- uh, 40 gigabit uh, depends. Uh, I, I was trying to interview the USB uh, forum, and they they say it's it's a lot to do with the, the every laptop manufacturer can decide if they want to do 10 or 20 gigabit or that's or very much dependent. Yeah, that's very much dependent on the on the host device in the end. So, but our G Drive Mobile Pro SSD, as we were saying, so we are already there with the Thunderbolt 3 interface with. 2,800 uh, megabyte per second. So we are already there with a 40 gigabit uh, uh, per second performance. I think this drive will actually go to full 2,800 or something like that on the MacBook M1 race range, I, uh, I would guess, uh, because they do support the full Thunderbolt 3, I guess. Uh, but uh, that's something maybe people can search on YouTube. There might be some people testing this out. I, and, I think now you are curious to, to test this one yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, but of course, uh, Western Digital is also famous for hard drives, so people can uh, just bunch, have also a bunch of external hard drives for like more like archiving, right? And exactly. then the SSD is for the work. Yeah, precisely. So SSD is for hot storage when you need to work really on the data and access in a very speed and timely manner. And then otherwise, I, I also have here my own MyBook Duo 36 terabyte, essentially, where I'm storing everything, all the picture library, all the data there, and save it there for years, essentially. And a few years ago, people were a little bit worried about the life uh, of SSDs, but these are probably going to last pretty much as pretty long as people want to use this device, no? Is it 10 years or... Yeah, now nowadays we are pretty much in the same uh, at the same reliability level, probably even more. Uh, that's that's really in the end depends how much you are writing a terabyte every day, gigabyte or even terabyte per every day. The warranty is going to be very long. The warranty on all these devices that you just saw is uh, five years. That's that's pretty that's long. Okay. Uh, uh, so I, uh, I guess I would recommend everybody just back up everything on the cloud also. Like uh, there's more and more archive cloud storage so- systems. Like uh, for more than a year, Amazon has been doing one terabyte for $1 per month. 
uh, on the, they call it the um, uh, deep archive. And I think Google is doing something also. Google Drive has some unlimited stuff. On the consumer side, at the same time, we also have our own solutions, both for consumer and also for professional, which is the MyCloud uh, family, essentially. So we have a couple of consumer solutions, which are the MyCloud Home and MyCloud Home Duo with the RAID feature. So those are really for the user that are not looking for complication. They want the easiest uh, setup possible. So those are not really marketed as NAS, but those are marketed as personal cloud. They are private at your home, not in a cloud, whatever, in a public cloud. So they are safe at home in your house and you can access to the data anywhere where you are. And then we have the MyCloud Pro Expert Series and the Pro Series, which are more for professionals, for small businesses. And those are adding more features in terms of packs, in terms of DRAM included, in terms of chipset, and also in terms of application that you can install on, on, on the NAS themselves. But when you talk about the MyCloud, it's basically host your own cloud at home, right? It's like a little NAS at home. Exactly. And, uh, and there's been some updates on this a little bit. Maybe performance has been improving and stuff. Yeah, we recently added an update on the Expert Series and the Pro Series. We updated the firmware essentially with the new OS 5, where you have more functionality. And also you have a very uh, useful application that you can navigate and use the entire functionality of your NAS directly from your smartphone essentially. And then and on the consumer side, on the MyCloud Home and MyCloud Home Duo, we also include more features from time to time from the beginning of last year. And we have kind of same level of experience that we have also on the EX series. Uh, what I think would be nice is when people buy one of these MyCloud devices, that you have some kind of service that you can actually back it up on the cloud. So uh, for the whole life of the device or something, I don't know, 10 years of cloud backup, as long as you, I don't know, have it connected or something. And then that, that'd be nice because uh, what if your house burns? Uh, then you need to have two my clouds, one at your mother's home or something at the same time, yeah. back up by yourself in two different places. Uh, I think it'd be nice to have a cloud thing, but I guess you, you don't sell actual cloud service no. storage, right? You just yep. sell to the cloud providers and there's more and more. And hopefully 2021 is going to be amazing with new uh, cloud, cloud uh, like I, I, it's always hard to find unlimited cloud storage that's officially unlimited and mm. because it's like really hard. Some people use too much, but uh, maybe very affordable, like yeah, $1 we are, per term. We, are, we tend not to be uh, closed in terms of system because with the application that we are Offering with my cloud on application, you can actually access also all the other public clouds, and you can, you know, sync with the with the public clouds, transfer in both a simultaneous way from the public cloud to the your personal cloud at home, and vice versa. So we are pretty open and allowing the consumer to to be pretty flexible in that. I think one of the little challenges that uh, I would have is uh, sometimes, especially when there's no like travel restrictions and I travel different places. Uh, for example, when I go to Las Vegas, uh, I never find bandwidth. It's yeah. really hard to upload my data. And it'd be nice if there was a map or some kind of thing. Maybe Western Digital could like work with Google or some, so do a layer in Google Maps somehow. And then you could find in any city a place to upload with full gigabit or 10 gigabit or something, you know, like you could plug in your SSD in like for 10 minutes and transfer a few terabytes over and then it will just back it up for you. That's That'd a be awesome. Idea. But also I think the 5G, 5G going forward might partially solve this problem, right? Yeah. If, if the 5G is a, is a real and not shared between thousands of people in each hotspot or something, I'm not totally sure how it works, but hopefully it's, it's, it sounds like crazy fast bandwidth so that's yep. going to be great so then you can just add a sim card to your ssd and upload directly right yep. <laughs> <At the> end. <laughs> all right cool thanks a lot thanks for showing these new four terabyte drives and very fast thanks to you for having me thanks